Neurologistic. Hello, this is Neurologistic. We hope that by watching our videos, you will have a better understanding about different concepts and theories in neuroscience. Today we are going to talk about the hippocampus because it takes up a crucial role in our cognitive functions. Scientists think that it has three main functions, mediating anxiety in animals, helping us with spatial navigation, and thirdly, it has an important role in memory. In this episode, we will be focusing on the role of the hippocampus in memory, and we will be talking about the two other functions more in later episodes. So. How did we get to know about its importance in memory formation? Back in the 1950s, a man known as Henry Mollison suffered from seizures. A surgeon suggested a risky procedure which would take out most of his hippocampi, that, in theory, would stop his seizures. Henry went into surgery, and his seizures did become more controlled, but unexpectedly. He suffered from a new disorder, memory disorder. He could still recollect some memories of events that happened before the surgery, but he could no longer form long-term memories. Working with memory disorder patients like Henry, neurologists now have a better understanding in how the brain forms memories. The hippocampus is right at the center of this process. By now, you may be asking, how does memory exactly work? Again, scientists are not entirely sure, but there are some theories about the mechanism of memory in the human brain. To put it simply, when there is a stimulation, electrical signals fire in a specific path of neurons. In short-term memory, it remains at this level: repeated electrical signals firing through the same path of neurons. And when you are no longer reminded of the stimulation, the memory fades away. However, if we encounter the stimulation over and over again, the short-term memory becomes encoded into long-term memory, which does not fade away, and we will be able to recall it months and months after not encountering the stimulation. However, we still do not know how or wonder what situations does encoding work. A specific example of memory formation would be: first, you see one plus one equals two. This is the stimulation that your brain receives. This sends an electrical signal that fires through a series of neurons. Because you encounter math problems a lot, your brain encodes this into long-term memory. And every time you are reminded of one plus one, the brain automatically retrieves the answer two. By firing through the root of neurons, so a memory is not a tangible object such as a chemical or a neuron, but rather a pattern or a root of neurons that the electrical signal passes through. For example, this path stores one plus one equals two, while this other path stores your computer password. So, in which step of memory formation is the hippocampus involved? Scientists are still debating on the nature of its role in human memory, but in Henry's case, we can see it is involved in encoding short-term memory into long-term memory, because he still has the ability to recollect most events that happened before the surgery. It suggests that long-term memory is largely stored in other parts of the brain. And that the hippocampus does not play a major role in recalling memories. However, luckily for Henry, he did not entirely lose the ability to remember new things. Five years after his surgery, he moved into a new apartment, and when scientists asked him to draw a map of the place, he was able to do so. The remaining parts of his hippocampi can still recognize places. Giving him the ability to navigate spatially, which we will discuss in more detail in the next episode. That is it for this episode. If you do have any questions, feel free to jot them down in the comments below. In the next episode, we will be talking about the role of the hippocampus in spatial navigation. Stay tuned.